Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camel stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Hayes, the stars of the Monday Night Blondie program, Penny Singleton and Arthur Lake, tonight's guests of Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Oh, there you are, Costello. Well, why are you late this time? Where oh, boy, Abbott. What's that? I just got back from the naval base in San Diego, and I got a message of great importance for all the sailors, from all the sailors to every woman and girl in this audience. Well, what is it? <whistles> yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Costello. What were you doing down at the naval base? Oh, what was I doing down at... I was helping them launch a submarine. And they gave me the most important job on the boat. Really? What was it? Well, when the sailors got the submarine ready to dive, I ran forward and held its nose. Uh, th- then what happened? <laughs> then what happened? Down we went, Abbott. Sixty feet in the water. When we got down to the bottom, I hopped off and took a walk. You took a walk in uh, sixty foot of water? And why not? I had my rubbers on. Oh. <laughs> you know, after all, we have to give those sailors... <laughs> no, really, we have to give those sailors credit. They're wonderful. Oh, I like sailors too, Abbott. <laughs> But I'm really in love with a Marine. You're in love with a Marine? Yeah. Marine O'Hara. Oh. <laughs> Look, uh, talk sense, Costello. Between you and me, love is silly. Between you and me, love would be ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> you don't even appeal! All right, never mind all of this. Listen, we've got important work to do. The government has started a national waste paper drive. And as mayor of Sherman Oaks... I mean to collect every scrap of paper in this town. Good. I gave all my paper, Abbott. I even ripped the paper off walls. Then I repapered the walls with the rolls of music from the player piano. You covered the walls with mm-hmm. the player piano rolls? That's what I did. That's fine. Good. Fine? Fine nothing. Now, every time I sneeze, the walls play Mersey Dotes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, will you get down to business, please? This campaign is important. I want you to do your part by going from door to door. Now, can you do it? Oh, that used to be my racket. One time I went from door to door selling mosquitoes. Oh, that's idiotic. <laughs> Who'd buy mosquitoes? Nobody. Then why did you sell them? No competition. Oh. <laughs> oh, here's Ken Nile. Well, hello, fellows. How's the waste paper drive coming along, Mayor Abbott? Just fine, Ken. Costello just promised to go all over town collecting scraps of paper from houses, scraps of paper from offices, scraps of paper from vacant lots. Well, you couldn't have picked a better man. He's scrap happy anyway. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see Funny. what? Hello. <laughs> you see what a sense of humor I have, Costello? One, two, three, and I jump all over you. Four, five, six, and you get right off. Now. Now, oh, let's not start an argument. Say, Ken, uh, what did your wife say when I appointed her head of the uh, paper drive committee? Oh, she was very happy, bud. She says people will think she's the most fortunate girl. She'll be fortunate if people think she's a girl. <laughs> oh, I heard that remark, you overstuffed low boy. I said it for you to hear, skinny, skinny. <laughs> and just a minute, Mrs. Niles, I ain't fat. Oh, no. You look like two-thirds of we the people. (laughs) Costello, you should treat Mrs. Niles with respect. She has character. Look how high she carries her head. She's had her face lifted so many times, it's a wonder she can stay on the ground. (laughs) Oh, Costello, I never had my face lifted. Of course, I I have used facelift lotion. Oh, you have used facelift lotion? Yes. Well, I once used that same lotion on a horse. Uh, did, it lift, <laughs> did it lift the horse's face? I don't know. We can't get him down off the chandelier. <laughs> Come in. Bonds and bombs will beat the axis, so be sure to pay your income taxes. Save your old tin cans, your ironing lead, and give it... All your waste paper to Dagwood Bumstead. Ha. Costello, it's Dagwood. Uh, Where's Blondie, Dagwood? Oh, she's out in the car. Wait a minute, I'll call her. Blondie! (laughs) Oh, oh, I'm coming, Dagwood. I, oh, oh, hello, Mr. Costello. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Dadwood and I are helping Mrs. Niles with the waste paper drive. Yeah. Oh, well, the first thing you ought to throw in this, uh, uh, I, 
fix it up this afternoon at rehearsal. Who's in mind? Say mine, huh? <laughs> well, here we go again. Well, the first thing you want to throw in is the paper that poem was written on. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> Hey, Dagwood, uh, do you make up that poem yourself or did some other jerk help you? Oh, no. I made it up myself. You had nothing to do with it. Uh, just a minute, Deadwood. Uh, Deadwood. Uh, Driftwood. Uh, no, 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 no. My name's Dagwood. Have you been inspected for termites? Uh, huh? <laughs> oh, now, Mr. Costello, don't you and Dagwood have a fight when there are so many important things to be done? Yeah, and we want every bit of waste paper you've got in this town. Mm -hmm. yeah, some men I know are even giving up their college diploma. Uh, <clears throat> have you got a college diploma? Huh? No. <laughs> have you got a high school diploma, hey? Nay. <laughs> Then uh, have you got a grammar school diploma? No, but you're getting warm. <laughs> oh, never mind the diplomas, Dagwood. Have you got the waste paper ready, Mayor Abbott? Uh, yes, Blondie, it's all collected. Okay. Costello, uh, carry that old burlap sack out to the truck. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Ah, you know, you always fool me, Mrs. Niles. I mean, the way you fold your foot well, over. thanks for your help, everybody. Now, Dagwood, ah. you gather up those loose papers and hurry. We've got lots of stuff to make. Yeah. Well, you're doing a wonderful job, Blondie. Thank you. Uh, and you keep up the good work, Dagwood. Oh, okay. don't worry, Mayor Abbott. Dagwood will work his head to the bone for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, Dagwood, hurry up. Yeah, well, I, I, I gotta get going. Uh, now, hold the door open for me, Blondie. All right, stand back, Mr. Costello. He moves very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, come here. Costello, are, aren't they, aren't they nice people? No, no. All kidding aside, aren't they nice people? Costello, why don't you answer me? Wait till I stop spinning. <laughs> well, come on, Costello. We've got to get down to the studio for our broadcast. Uh, by the way, where is our script for the night? I got it right here. And hey, have it. Have it. What's the matter? The script is gone. Why, well, it was right here a minute ago. Hey, do you suppose they took it with the waste paper? That's it, Abbott. They took it. We gotta catch that bag, dogwood, bed spread, or whatever the guy's name is. <laughs> Out of my way, Abbott! I move very fast. Here I come. <laughs> Costello, you're supposed to open the door. Now he tells me. West of the Ivory Coast and the Gold Coast is the independent African nation of Liberia, now host to United States Army and Navy men. To Americans stationed in Liberia, to United States bases and outposts throughout the world, go camel cigarettes. By the million, by the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services, according to actual sales records. Whether camel cigarettes go to West Africa or to you, they stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning. Because camels are packed to go around the world. Yes, you can be sure camel cigarettes are fresh. Sure, too, that they have more flavor. The result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. Freshness. And more flavor are two reasons why more people want camels today, both at home and overseas. If your store is sold out, remember, camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. And now, back to Abbott and Costello, who are still searching for their missing radio script. Come on, Costello. We've got to find our radio script. Abbott, are you sure this is Dagwood's home? Certainly. And are they classy? Look, they've got their names painted in gold on the mailbox. That's not... You should see my house. I got the Costello coat of arms painted on the front door. What's the Costello coat of arms? Two sheriffs jumping up and down on the second mortgage. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Knock on the door. Oh, it's Blondie's little boy, Alexander. Hello, Alexander. Oh, how do you do, gentlemen? Come right in. Pull up a chair and sit down. Thank you, Alexander. We're Abbott and Costello. 
Oh, well, in that case, I'd better open the window. <laughs> oh, you're a cute kid, ain't you, kid? I must invite you over to the house to play with some of old, my old, uh, it has to come out one way or another. <laughs> must come over and play with my old razor blade. No, 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 Costello, that's not nice. Uh, look, Alexander, we're looking for your mother and father. Uh, they've got our radio script. Do you know where they are? I ain't saying yes, and I ain't saying no. Well, what are you saying? I ain't saying. He ain't saying. How old are you, Alexander? Nine. You're going to reach ten the hard way. <laughs> Say, Costello, look out the window. There's Dagwood and Blondie going to that house across the street. Come on, we've got to get that radio script. Yes, step aside, Alexander. I move pretty fast. Out of the way, Alexander. He's coming through. I don't know how that Dagwood does it. He gets through every time. Hurry up, Costello. We've got to get across the street while I... Okay. Damn it! <laughs> Wait for the city! Hey, you fat boy! Get back there in the curve! But officer, look! Don't butt me! What do you think the traffic lights are for? Well, the red light is the signal for the pedestrians to cross the street. Oh, the red light is, is it? Then tell me, what's the green light for? That's the signal for the automobiles to cross the pedestrians. <laughs> Oh, a wise guy. Well, don't try to cross the street again until you get the green light and I blow me whistle twice. Or I'll give you a ticket for jaywalking. Costello, will you please hurry over here? <laughs> now go ahead. Oh, so there you are, young man. Oh, wait, don't stop me now. I got the green light. I got the green light. You don't even know me. Oh, <laughs> yes, I do. My young Mr. Squawky from Milwaukee. Lady, look, I got to get my radio strip across the street. Oh, of course, Mr. Squawky had a mustache and was bald-headed, but honestly, you could pass for brothers, and you were well, dressed exactly alike, only he was a streetcar conductor. Well, I had the wrong streetcar conductor. Lady, you're off your trolley. <laughs> now, will you let me get across the street? <laughs> hey, you! So you're crossing against the red light again. Again? I'd like to get over once. <laughs> All right, now go ahead. Pardon me, young man, but I'm from the recruiting office. How would you like to join the Navy? How would I like to join the Navy? Yes. I'd like to join up it. Ah, so the Navy's a great place for you. Think of it, you can cross the ocean. Cross the ocean? I can't even get across the street. <laughs> Look, I'll see you later. Hey, I'm coming. Aha, so it's you again. Aha, so it's you again. Oh, it's you. This is the third time you've crossed the street against the red light. Now come with me, I'm taking you to the police station. Where's the police station? Across the street. Good. I finally made it. <laughs> Listen, officer, we're Abbott and Costello. Our radio script is lost, and we only have a few minutes to get on the air. Oh, so you're Abbott and Costello, eh? I never miss your program. You don't? No, I don't hear it, so I don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> now get along with you. Go peddle your corn. Yeah, but I'm going to take a sock and... Uh, quiet. quiet. Look, there's Blondie and Dagwood coming out of that building. Oh, Blondie! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <Thief>? <laughs> <laughs> Imposter! <laughs> Oh, Mayor Abbott. Well, What's Blondie, wrong? when you took that waste paper basket out of here, uh, the house, you know, uh, you must have taken our radio script, too. Uh, oh. We're due on the air any second. Maybe our papers are on that truck. Oh, no, that load was sent out on the train hours ago. Oh, see what you did, Dagwood? Now what are Abbott and Costello going to do on the air tonight? Oh, gee, Blondie, uh, maybe I can help them out, huh? <laughs> My whole family was good at making jokes. <laughs> they certainly did all right with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, just a minute, boys. I've got a great idea. I've got something here in my purse. It's a school play that little Alexander wrote. You can do it on the air. I'm sure Alexander would give you the right. I'd like to give Alexander the right. <laughs> and a couple of good lefts. All right. Wait a minute, Costello. This might be just what we need. Oh, sure. It's a dandy play. All about Snow White and uh, the Seven Dwarfs. And I know just the part I'm going to play. Yeah, so do I. Come on, dopey. <laughs> Hey, 
Here's little Connie Haynes to sing the novel new rhythmic hit, Take It Easy. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't you know it's more romantic when a dance is slow? Take it easy, take it easy. What's the good of feeling high when all the lights are low? Take it easy, take it easy. We've got lots of time ahead of us, the night is young. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't you know the music should be played instead of swung? Take your time, take your time, dance it with me. Take your time, take your time. Slow if you please. It's a moment tender. I know I'm not supposed to make a run, but jump, take it easy, take, take it easy. If I don't feel that our romance will hit a bump, take it easy, take it easy. Yes, I know it's time for romance when the music we take it easy, take, take it easy. I should really try to make my heart control my feet. Take your time, take your time, dance it with ease, dance it with ease. Take your time, take your time, slow as you please, slow as you please. Take your time, take your time. I've been talking about taking more time, but I've changed my mind, changed my mind, and baby. Don't wanna take my time. Well, come on, Costello. Let's get in the studio. We'll do our on the air in a few seconds. Where's Dagwood and Blondie? Oh. We are Mr. Abbott, and I have the script of Snow White right with me. Now, if you'll all gather around, I'll assign each one his part. First, I will play the part of the princess, Snow White. Oh, goody, goody, and I will be the handsome prince, huh? Now, wait a minute, Thorkwood. <laughs> I play the leading parts around here. I'm a real actor. I was born in a theater. And it cost my father 25 cents extra. You were born? <laughs> <laughs> You were born in the theater and it cost your father 25 cents extra for what? The stork dropped me in a load sheet. <laughs> the stork that brought you should have been arrested for smuggling dope. <laughs> hey, 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 that's a good one, Mrs. Niles. Ha, ha, ha. Dagwood, you keep out of this. I think Mr. Costello is right, Mrs. Niles. This is his program, and he should have the leading part. Oh, what does Costello know about acting? Now, me, I am part of the theater. Your lower lip looks like the second balcony. <laughs> uh, Costello? Yeah? Costello, you know that Mrs. Niles was a dramatic actress? That's right, Mr. Rabbit. I, why, it's been only five years since I left the New York stage to poke my nose into Hollywood. You didn't have to leave New York for that. <laughs> Costello, please, will you cut that out and let Blondie assign the parts for the play? Yeah, now, now Blondie, uh, please give me a good part. <laughs> With Abbott and Costello's audience, I'll be able to reach 30 million people. It's a good thing they can't reach you. <laughs> oh, don't mind Dagwood, Mr. Costello. He's always wanted an acting career. Yeah, that's right, fellas. Every time I get near you real actors, I get the smell of the grease paint in me nostrils. The smell of the what in your who? <laughs> the, oh, oh, the smell of the grease paint in me nostrils. <laughs> Dagwood, the word is nostrils, not nostrils. Well, what's the difference? Nostrils, nostrils? He's got the smell. <laughs> Dagwood just doesn't know what to do about it. The smell? No, my career. Oh. Uh, Dagwood, huh? oh, why don't you recite one of your poems for Mr. Costello? You know, like you do on our Monday night show. Uh, he might like to hear it. You want a bit? No. 
come on, Costello. Give him a chance. Go ahead, Dagwood. Hey, go ahead, huh? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Abbott. You're a kind man. You remind me of my father. But, Dagwood, Mr. Abbott only has one head. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing at? Why don't I think of a joke like that? <laughs> go ahead, Dagwood. Recite your poem. Yeah, go ahead, huh? <laughs> Very well. <clears throat> now, uh, this is called uh, The Raven. Uh, the Raven. <clears throat> As I sat rocking, gently rocking, rocking on my chamber floor, came a knocking, gently knocking, knocking at my chamber door. Quote the raven, nevermore. Say, how'd you like that, huh? Don't look now, but the raven just laid an egg. <laughs> Costello, let's go on with the play. Uh, Ken Niles, will you please set the scene? Okay, bud. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the Waste Paper Players, starring Abbott and Costello and Dagwood and Blondie. We present tonight an episode from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, entitled, The Seven Dwarfs Sat on the Wagon, or The Surrey with the Shrimps on Top. <laughs> As the scene opens, the princess is calling to her prince. Oh, prince. Oh, prince. Here, prince. Come, prince. Here, prince. Come, come. Come here, prince. Here I am, princess. I have come to save you from your cruel stepmother. I have just arrived by Greyhound. What's that? Oh, my dogs are tired. <laughs> ah, my lovely princess, let me smother you with kisses. Oh, oh, Prince. Hey, 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 oh, hey, 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 what's oh. going on here? He's kissing you. Oh, Jack, well, this is just a play. Yeah, but he isn't playing. Uh, Dagwood, you're not supposed to talk now. You represent the forest. You play the part of a tree. What part? The set. Uh, uh, hey, now, wait a minute. Oh, so you're a tree. Now, never mind. <laughs> not Chris. All right, never mind. Yeah. Just a minute. Now, Costello. Please. <laughs> never mind that, Costello. Go on with the play. Come on. Go on with the play, Lou. Okay. Now we go on with the play. Now, uh, let me see. Ah, oh, my lovely princess, please let me smother you with kisses. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. You, you just did that kissing scene, Mr. Costello. Listen, uh, isn't that Deadwood a little too young for you, Blondie? Um, Dagwood, ah. in this play, Mr. Costello is my brave, bold knight. Mm, I thought knights were big, tall fellas. Huh? This is spring, and the knights are getting shorter. <laughs> Costello, will you please read your next line? Okay, my fair princess, what brings these tears to your lovely eyes? My dead mother is so cruel to me. She makes me do all the drudgery all day long is wash and scrub and wash and scrub. And at night she makes me sleep in the broom closet. What do you hear from the mop? <laughs> oh, oh, woe is me. All I do is work, work, work. I worked my fingers to the bone, and what have I got to show for it? Bony fingers. Hark, <laughs> hark, princess, look, the queen, your wicked stepmother approaches. But how did she get across the moat? She must have caught the guard with his bridges down. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the queen now. The queen, she looks more like the three of clubs. <laughs> ah, good morning, my little princess. I have brought you a nice red apple. Hey, 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 Blondie, don't eat that apple. It's poison. How do you know? I'm reading on the next page. Ha, 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 ha. Costello, don't let the princess eat the apple. You must save her. Here, Snow White, give me that apple. I'll make the ugly queen eat it herself. Open your mouth, queen. Oh, you silly baboon. This is me over here. You're feeding the apple to my horse. The chief fooled me. <laughs> Oh, my brave prince, you have saved me from the poison apple. How can I ever repay you? Come into my arms and let me smother you with kisses. Hey, hey wait a minute. There's too much kissing going on here. Hey, Blondie. Hey. I don't like I'm it. I'm so, brother. Hey, Blondie, I don't like this place. A... I do. Yeah, oh. oh, go on home, Dad. But I'll see you next Monday night. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey. hey. <laughs> Woo! Hey, come on, let's go home, Blondie. I'm getting hungry. Oh, what a spot for the poison apple. Here, Deadwood. Open your mouth and I'll torture you the apple. Yeah, oh, boy. 
Brother, he was really hungry. <laughs> Only three seeds hit the ground. Costello, will you stick to the play? Pardon me, everybody. Pardon me. I'm the NBC usher in this studio. Hold the door open, Costello. Stand back, everybody. They move very fast. <laughs> Costello, what was that? What do you think it was? The audience! Oh, get out of here! <laughs> and Costello will be back in just a moment. <laughs> Thanks to the Yanks of the Week, tonight we salute Second Lieutenant Paul M. Kerner of Pontiac, Illinois, who led 22 Americans in four of our tanks against a German-held town on the casino front. After smashing a German self-propelled gun in a tank, Lieutenant Kerner and his men attacked fortified houses, taking 30 prisoners. Then, sending some men back with the prisoners... The young lieutenant and ten other men, using tanks and bazookas, took the town, capturing about 50 more German prisoners, including a whole battalion staff. In honor of you and your men, Lieutenant Paul M. Kerner, the makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the four Camel Radio shows honors the Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling Camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free Camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with our guests, Alan Hale and Sally Eilers. <laughs> now here's Abbott and Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Blondie and Dagwood, thanks very much for being with us tonight. Hey, Dagwood, I listen to your program every Monday night, and I'd like to know how you get through those doors without crashing. Oh, there's nothing to it, Mr. Costello. Dagwood, take his hand and show him. Okay, here we go. Hold the door open, Blondie. Okay. We're moving fast. Gee, they made it. I don't see them. Dagwood, Costello, where are you? We're down here. Who left the cover off this manhole? Good night, folks. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you Next week for another great Abbott and Justin. With a special guest, Mr. Alan Hale and Miss Sally Eiler. And remember, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat, no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. This is Ken Niles wishing you a very pleasant good night from Hollywood.